Hello and welcome to another episode of Taylor Talks Comics. Today we're going to go over the John Ramita's The Amazing Spider-Man Daily Strips Artist Edition. Stay tuned. Alright, thanks for joining me. Whether you're watching this on the Taylor Talks Comics YouTube channel or the Organic Price Books YouTube channel, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below with your thoughts on this book or any other thoughts that I bring up throughout the duration of this video. I love talking comics, I reply to all comments, regardless of channel. Also, this is being brought to you by OrganicPriceBooks.com, which I want to impress upon you is the best place to buy your comics and graphic novels. Please use my promo code if you shop there. It'll save you some money. I get a little bit of kickback. We all win. Uh, but you get $2 off if you use the promo code TaylorTalksComics, all one word. TaylorTalksComics, use that in the checkout, save $2 off. For bigger savings, for a bigger order, if you're ordering four or more books, use TTC, ship it together. That's TTC, ship it together, all one word. And it'll save you 5% off of that bigger order. So today, we're going to talk about John Romita's The Amazing Spider-Man Daily Strips Artist Edition. This is another beautiful artist edition, and this book is freaking massive. I feel like the more and more I do videos, I'm constantly saying, this is the biggest book of my collection. This might be the biggest book of my collection to date. I don't know. But just to press upon you the size of this thing, the gargantuan nature of this book and its beautiful presentation. Here is a Marvel omnibus. Yes, I'll pause for your gasps with how big that is. Oh, well, how big is It's an artist edition. All artist editions are big. No, here is the John Burns X-Men artist edition, which I did do a overview on this on my channel and the Organic Price Books channel. This is your normal 11 by 17 artist edition. Um, and you can see that it's still bigger than and wider than it. So it's still bigger than an artist edition. If you take it by this note here on the spine, um, depending on how you put this on your shelf, this is going to be really hard to do. I can't, okay. I don't know if I'm going to put this in the camera. Okay, so they're spine to spine now. Ugh. The X-Men one is a little bit taller than it if you go that way. Um, just to let you know the size of this thing. So this is done in landscape format because these are the newspaper strips, the daily strips. Spider-Man was a daily newspaper strip that ran, oh geez, I should have, I should have had this note, noted in my brain, but from like the mid sixties all the way to like 2017, it ran that long. Um, Stan Lee continued writing, um, the strips all the way through close to the time that he, he passed, I think, um, Larry Liebert was doing, his brother was doing a lot of the artwork in those later years. But the early strips, the early four or five years were done by John Romita. So not only was he taking over the art chores and art duties of the Amazing Spider-Man monthly title after D Steve Dicko left, but he's also doing the newspaper strips. And that's what this collects. I think it's like the first two years or so. When we get in here, I'll, I'll let you know that. But again, if you want to see the spine of this book, you get some nice artwork. It's done like the pencil page there, which I'll show you off how great that is when we get to the inside. And then here's the back of the book, collecting, or showing off a couple of the strips. And you get John Romita's signature at the bottom. So it's going to be kind of a hard book to show off because it's so big and in landscape format, but I'm going to do my best. All right, so you, these are the end papers. Um, you get these blown up images, which I don't think you'll ever see John Romita's artwork in person collected in a way that's this massive besides with this presentation, which is absolutely brilliant. I'm going to try to pull this into the screen here. This is the other side of the end papers. Like, I don't think you'll have a bigger original art scanned image of John Romita's artwork than you have here. Um, and you can see this is an important page 
It's the burglar allowed to escape that day at the studio. If I'd stopped him, then Uncle Ben would be alive today. He, what a great image, because he's holding the bur like holding the burglar up, and then you can see him letting him pass over here. Obviously, the story is originally drawn by Steve Ditko, so this was John Romita's um, chance to draw it. And then you get a black title page with the... This book's really hard to show off. With this title page right here. Really cool um, book design here. Which, who is the book designer? Scott Dunbeer is the guy that oversees this whole project. Um, he's the editor. Oh, here's the designer. Randall Dock. Uh, but Nicholas Nino was the editorial assistant. He probably helped scan some of these pages in with Scott. But Scott Dunbeer is the guy that does all the artist editions over at IDW. Um, gotta show this image, too. There's another blown-up John Romita piece. I love the color treatment in the back, too. And then this collects... Already covered by John Romita, story by Stan Lee. January 3rd, 1977 through July 11th, 1978. Those are all the strips that are included in here. And then here's a little bit of about this edition. John Romita's Amazing Spider-Man. Ongoing series, one dedicated to showcasing extraordinary artist in a format as special as their work deserves. Now we're going to get into the strips. So if you've not seen an artist edition before, um, please check out my... I have a whole playlist on artist editions on my channel. There's something that I'm really getting a kick out of collecting. Uh, it's great to see... From a historical standpoint of comic book history, which I love, um, it's great to see this, but also just like the presentation of artwork. It's amazing to see. So these are high, like as high-res scans as you could possibly get of the original art. So you're going to see all the warts and everything that was put together to put the page together before it was scanned in and printed for the newspaper page. So you're going to things, see, see, see things like uh, pasted up. Let me see if I can actually move my camera down a little bit for this. This portion of the video. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. Um, you can see like the pasted up title credits here. It looks like that was all pasted up as well. The typing right there, John Romita's signature. You can see some white out over here on these lettering. Um, but sometimes in the artwork, you can see changes. Like right here, it looks like there's a little bit of white out on the back of Spidey's mask. Maybe John Romita didn't like the way that he curved the figure, the, the head of the figure down there. So he maybe whited it out and redrew it. Um, that's the thing, the, the cool parts of these presentation are cool pieces of original. I can't talk. The cool aspect of these artist editions is seeing all those works and all. Um, and you can even see like, this page was taped right here. Um, so I'm assuming you might have had multiple of these on a page. Uh, or maybe they're just a bunch of stuff up here they didn't want to put. So we still see like the taped, where he taped the art paper to the, to the board, to his table, to make sure it didn't move around as he was drawing it. Um, but again, you can see some white on the lettering there. Maybe they changed the wording, or maybe the letter um, didn't like the way they did it. The letter on, I don't, I don't think back here, back in this time, just the 70s? Okay, so I guess it was, ran from the 70s through 2017. Back now, I don't think the letter was Stan Sakai, but later, Stan Sakai would be the long-term letter for all of these strips, um, which is really kind of cool. Which is why you get... Stan Lee would be the one to uh, write the introduction for the first um, saga of uh, Isaki Yojimbo. He wrote the first introduction to those collections. So here you get uh, Mary Jane, who John Romita created the image for and also just kind of perpetually created the way that she'd always be drawn. Um, the in-house style of Mary Jane. And you get Aunt May at the top here. So yeah, this collects in succession all of those years of daily strips. So you're able to read these as daily strips in the newspaper, which is great because that's like an untapped storytelling device uh, or storytelling of Spider-Man that we not a lot of people got. I never knew about um, these comics. I didn't know that there was a daily Spider-Man newspaper strip because my newspaper didn't carry these. Even great, great pieces of Zipatone used on Doctor Doom's uh, cloak there with freaking J. Jonah Jameson in, in the back of a cab with Doctor Doom. What a cool, cool image that is. That'd make a great t-shirt. Just a weird little thing. You can see John Romita using some Kirby Crackle all over this image. 
So yeah, they, they were telling a different story than what was in the monthly comics. The continuity didn't change too much until I think, and again, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, um, but at the time that Mary Jane and Spider-Man get married, I believe they stay married in the comic book strip. I think they veer off into a different kind of continuity in the comic strip as they do um, in the monthly comics. I might be wrong on that, but they do eventually veer off. But otherwise, they're telling a, a similar story. You can see Doctor Doom plays a big role in these early stories. And you just get like three or four panels a day. Three or four panels a day is what John Romita had to work with in telling this ongoing story of Spider-Man. But it's really fun to read a Spider-Man story in this style. And just imagine only getting those three or four panels every single day in the newspaper. Um, because you think like monthly comics back then, especially like the Stan Lee and Jim Shooter eras where they're the editors, you would have like the every issue could be someone's first issue type of storytelling where Stan Lee and Jim Shooter would both implore upon the writers to say like you have to kind of reiterate who these characters are, what their powers are, what makes them who they are because someone's first Spider-Man issue could be Amazing Spider-Man 78 or 149. Um, we don't know that they've been reading it for months and months and months. They can't just act like they've been here before, so you got to explain it to them. You see, like, a real weird paste-up job here. I'm assuming whatever they used to uh, white that out or whatever didn't age very well, because, again, these are original pieces of art that, over time, are going to age and discolor. Um, and we don't know who owned these pages, too. Like, Scott Dunbeer's I always kind of joke that he's like the Indiana Jones of original comic book art because he's really like going traveling throughout the country finding out who has these pieces and his goal usually is to with these artist editions to have a entire issue or entire story um throughout the book I, I don't think he likes to have just random pages of random issues collected he'd rather have like a whole story that you can read in a nice presentation because this is a great way to read these comic book issues so with that, um, some of these artists will just sell, like, I don't know if this is John Romita, his nature, if, or if one person owned all of these. Um, but he could have just been like, yeah, I have this one little page, I'll sell it to you for a couple hundred bucks at a convention, and just sold each one of these strips to different people all throughout the world. Um, well, it would be Scott Dunbeer's then job to, or his goal, his task, to go and hunt down all of them, to take these high-quality scans of them, to piece them together for you in this presentation. So it really is a great preservation of comic book history like this one is definitely just like the comparison of these two like this one's definitely yellowed in nature it looks like there might even be i don't know if it's like a coffee stain or if that's an ink stain whatever that is um on there compared to the more white one of this so we don't know if um this one was like stuck in the sunlight and that's why it is the way it is we don't know but really really a fun way to read spider-man comics there's Kingpin showing off his, how strong he is as a strong man as he fights this guy up here. Yeah, so if you're a big fan of Spider-Man, you're a big fan of John Romita's artwork, then this book is definitely a must-have. Um, if you're a fan of these newspaper strips, IDW did collect uh, through their Library of American Comics five volumes of the... I guess the five earliest years, I don't know if they're like two years per volume or what it, what it was, of the of this comic book strips in their originally printed form. So you won't see like the original art part of it, but their original piece. And I'd love to have those books. I think they're really out of print right now, though. And then they just stopped. They said there won't be any more because I guess the they weren't selling as well. But for them to collect every year, I mean, it would it would be like almost like Charlie Brown, like the Peanuts collections for Fantagraphics, like to have... From 71 all the way to 2017, I mean, you're talking 29 years, 30, 26, 36 years of comics of this daily comic book strip. That would probably be like 18 volumes or something. My math is correct there. So is there an audience that wants 18 volumes of this daily strip? I don't know. I kind of want them, though. So if anybody knows a... Uh, has a tip on how to get those for cheap since they're out of print let me know but yeah this is a great great presentation great great book absolutely love it uh there's not a lot of extras in the back i don't think let me get to the back here 
And you get the last strip there. And then a little John Rita biography here, which it's always cool to have a uh, self-portrait of an artist at a drawing table. A little biography. Scott Dunbeer did say he was on the Near Condition channel doing an interview, which is awesome. Go back and watch that. Um, but he did say that there is enough for a second volume of the John Ramita strips for this, if the sales were, were good enough, which I hope they were. Uh, but here's the end papers on this side, which is a lot different. You get a uh, image of Craven, the hunter, busting through the uh, <clears throat> the offices of J. Jonah Jameson. And then, like I said, the back of the book. Really, really cool book. Highly recommend it if you're into Spider-Man, if you're in, into original art, or if you're into John Romita, or all three. Uh, buy this at uh, organicpricebooks.com. Save $2 off if you use the Taylor Talks Comics promo code. That's Taylor Talks Comics, all one word. If you order this plus three other books, or you're just putting an order in for four books or more, use TTC Ship It Together. That's going to save you 5% off your order. That's TTC Ship It Together. Uh, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell notification icon. I go live on my YouTube channel once a week to co cover comic book news. You don't want to miss that. So hit that bell notification icon so you know when I go live. Um, and comment down below, whether you're on the Organic Price Books YouTube channel or the Taylor Talks Comics YouTube channel, I will reply to your comments. I love talking comics with all of you guys. Have a great one. Keep buying and reading comics.